global disruption of the past few years has accelerated the use of cloud platforms by enterprises and organizations around the world. And that in turn has resulted in the transformation of the cloud platform operator community. One example is City Network, the European cloud specialist that recently updated its strategy and changed its name to Clura. So I'm talking today with Johan Christensen, who was the CEO of City Network and is now founder of Clura and its VP of Innovation. Johan, great to see you again. Thanks for joining us. Um, so can you tell us about the transition of City Network to Clura? What was behind this transformation? Hey, Ray, great to be with you. Um, yeah, really, it's, it's a change in how we see our model. We are going to work a lot more with partners and I think it's clear that with the stance that Europe has today and where we are in our, in our cloud providers in general, Europe and, um, and most of the nations in general in Europe needs to work together to actually provide something that becomes competitive in the market. So we've decided to go all in with not only working with consultancy firms and, and system integrators for, for reach, so to speak, but also to make sure that partners are delivering services on top of the stack. It could be 5G, it could be AI, ML, where we can find niche players that are actually the best at what they're doing in, in, in those specific areas, making us and, and the group more competitive. So, so it's a different model that we, we're, we're uh, pushing forward with. As you go through this uh, change, what kind of uh, trends are you witnessing in terms of cloud consumption by enterprises in Europe? There are, of course, a lot of different trends. You know, the, the, the ones that we've been following in the sense of continued growth, continued usage of the public cloud and so forth is simply just continuing. What we see as a provider, we see a slight change in how we approach the customers and where the value lies. It used to be the infrastructure, you know, whether it's Kubernetes and containers and so forth, but that's going away and it's kind of like a hygiene factor today. Uh, we're all talking more about the higher layers where, where a true business value lies, whether it's AI, ML, or uh, IoT, or, or potentially uh, 5G, for example, when it comes to telcos, right? So I think that that is a, a big change that we will continue to see. And that is what, you know, the enterprise is going to be looking for and going higher up in the sense of getting bigger value and bang for the buck and quicker out to the market with with these types of new services, um, I would say would be the, the next over the next year, the big thing. Now, digital sovereignty has become a major topic in Europe in recent years. Uh, how is this impacting the European cloud services market? And in what way does this impact the telco community? I actually think that's going to be probably the biggest change that we will see here going forward. As you know, over the last few years, there's been a lot of changes in the market, uh, not to mention geopolitically, so to speak. Uh, we've seen everything from chips manufacturer having difficulties and how that's affecting us to, I think, governments starting to talk about, you know, food uh, and, and very the very bare necessities that we need to survive, so to speak. And uh, so I think the digital sovereignty, there's, there's a move from at least a bunch of the nations within Europe where they want to become more resilient. Uh, they're looking at vulnerabilities. I think we see, you know, cybersecurity also has hampered a lot of large enterprises already, uh, which means that, you know, our society can very quickly become crippled. So the digital sovereignty comes down to kind of sort of, you know, like, of course, Europe needs rail railways. So does every other market out there. And without railways, you know, we wouldn't be where we are today. The same thing goes with digital you know, Europe and, and each nation needs its own capacity to be able to provide certain things. It could be, of course, based on the fact that, you know, certain data needs certain type of security and so forth. But it all also really comes down to the innovation part, meaning that everybody needs to have access to be able to handle data, of course, in compliance and legally and so forth, but to also be able to have control over that. Uh, Europe does not have hyperscalers, for example, the same way China and the U.S. does. And that means, uh, of course, that we become more vulnerable if in case big things happen in, in and around the world. So uh, I think you'll find that uh, become a big trend where governments will look at the market as a whole. How can we have more choice? Uh, right now, there's a legal polio almost going on in Europe with two or three providers kind of eating the whole cake. 
And, and I think you will see, you know, GAIAX in Germany, you'll see a lot of efforts happening where government agencies and governments as a whole will try to make sure that there's a broader choice for all of us out there to consume and make sure should something happen, we're more ready to take that on. Because I think uh, the last year has shown us that lots of things are happening and we have not been prepared to take that on. And, and digital might be, or in a digital infrastructure really, might be the most important part because, you know, food production does not happen without the server behind it. So I think you'll see everybody be affecting, affected by it. Telcos, of course, is a core part of, of society today, you know, carries much of the data. So I think telcos will certainly be part of that trend as well, where, you know, they'll play a part in being, being able to provide that digital sovereignty. Yes, I think we're starting to see uh, the way that operators are, are behaving in, in Europe and around the world uh, to, to fit in with that trend and become more IT services as well as just communications providers. And I think that's that's part of that whole trend, it would seem. Um, now, the other thing we're hearing from uh, telcos as well is uh, is as they start to embrace the public cloud more, it's uh, around the, 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 the cost of this and the economics. So do you think the economics of using public cloud platforms stack up for the telcos? Because uh, there are some cost concerns. Yeah, I mean, there are cost concerns, Ray, but is that truly the issue here, right? I think the reason why we're using public clouds has kind of not that much to do with cost. It's all about that automation journey, the innovation journey, where digital is at the foundation of pretty much everything we do. Uh, I think actually Ginny, the former CEO of IBM, when, when she bought Red Hat, she said it well. She said, you know, you know, public cloud and, and the new way of working, so to speak, is three times as expensive, but it's 10 times faster. And it's that speed that we all need to, to uh, attain. If we don't, we're going to you know, fall behind when it comes to any type of innovation and any type of service. Because, again, digital is, of course, at the core, whether it's your processes or actually the customer meeting itself. So I think it's less about cost. There's going to be instances when that's at play, of course, and we're going to find, you know, certain workloads, certain things where let's do it a different way. But overall, I think that it's dangerous to think of this as a cost uh, uh, cost issue, so to speak, because it's not really what the main point of this is. You know, it's a matter of how fast can you drive this forward. Uh, and without the cloud, uh, most companies will not be able to do at the same speed that uh, the competitors will. So how do you view the relationship between the telcos and the hyperscaler public cloud giants? Uh, do you see it as beneficial to both parties? Listen, I think that's a super complex question, right? I mean, no, this is not a mutually beneficial thing in my mind. Uh, I think that the telcos need to watch out in a big way. On the one hand, you have a necessity to work with the cloud providers. There's, there's no way to not do that. On the other hand, the more knowledge uh, that the cloud providers or the, the hyperscalers gain, the more, of course, they can eat in. I think that last year's uh, acquisition of, uh, like if you look at Microsoft and what they did with the, the, the uh, network cloud in, in the US with AT&T, I think it's quite telling where the hyperscalers are continuing to eat into the services on top where the true value lies. If we have the pipe at the bottom, the pipe will always be there. I don't think that the hyperscales are going to want to you know, take all the pipes and so forth. That's not where they're at. But I think that they want to continue to eat in at, at the top uh, of the evolution, so to speak, of workloads and, and what truly brings value to the customers. And that's where I think, you know, again, the AT&T deal and Microsoft kind of is telling it's going to continue that way. They're going to continue to eat in uh into services and i think just like telcos do a good a good thing by watching out a little bit asking what turf do we really really want and can we excel at that i think telcos in general over the last 20 years have been trying to find those services that truly bring value in a different sense than just being the pipe so to speak and had had the challenge there and i think that the hyperscales will pr prove to be um uh a difficult balancing act in the sense of let's work together 
but also not give away the store. So I, I do think that the telcos should be very careful in, in how they do those strategic alliances and partnerships. It's a must, it's a necessity, uh, but do watch out because I do believe that you know any business that they want, they will continue to eat in and that also goes for the telcos. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think what you've just said that kind of uh, reflects the result of a poll we ran recently in our public uh, cloud and telcos summit that showed that there, there is a little bit of hesitancy there in terms of what kind of control the telcos might lose as they engage more with the public cloud hyperscalers. So, uh, Johan, great insights there. Uh, thanks very much for joining us today and giving us an update on uh, Clura and uh, look forward to chatting with you again soon. Thanks very much. Thank you.